Have you guys ever seen a Galio mid-run heal? There's some wild stuff out there right now, guys. Hello Summoners, I'm Zyrene and I'm here to bring you guys another Pro Guides video. This time we're going to be covering new builds that have arisen from Korean solo queue on patch 10.10. .10. This patch was actually a really hefty one, so it should come to nobody's surprise that some people are really starting to think outside of the box now. Like always, we're going to cover builds across every single role, so make sure to stay tuned for yours. If you play multiple or want to do some research for your friends too, then even better. Do me a favor though and answer our question of the day. Who's your favorite champion to play in normal games exclusively? In other words, who's fun for you, but not someone you'd be willing to play in rank because they're not that great. Or maybe you're not that great at playing them. Nothing wrong with some self-awareness, guys. For me, I like to play Kane, especially Blue Kane. You can definitely dominate games. There's not a lot of counterplay once you get ahead, but in solo queue games, the higher elo you are, the more people will try to keep you down during the early game, which is your weakest point. So it's not a champion that helps people that much, and it's very selfish, and that's not usually my style. But in normal games, I do like to play that way from time to time. I also love playing Hecarim. You run super fast and get to trample over your enemies, but games feel super hit or miss for me when I play him in ranked. I prefer consistency in my climb, but when playing some normal games with friends, I'm always happy to lock that pony in. Now, let me know your answers down below in the comment section. One last thing though, before we start the video, I wanna let you guys know that we've started a Discord community and we want you guys to join. Make sure to check out the link in the description. We would love to connect with you guys. Now, let's jump right into the video. First up, beginning with the top lane, let's talk about Kale. She hasn't been seeing much play whatsoever, but maybe this new build is just what she needs to claw back into the meta. Monomune has been gaining popularity across Summoner's Rift because of how gold efficient an item it is. However, it does take quite a bit of time to scale up. Luckily for Kale players, that's nothing new as she's a champion that comes online later in the game regardless. First, let's run through the items. You're going to build a Monomune, Berserker Greaves, Essence Reaver, Rapid Fire Cannon, Infinity Edge, and a flexible final item such as Hextech Gunblade. You're focused on dealing as much basic attack damage as possible, and a crit build will help you accomplish that. For runes, you want to run Fleet Footwork, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Monoflow Band, and Gathering Storm. By taking Presence of Mind and Monoflow Band, you're further increasing the gold efficiency of Monomune. Ultimately, this build synergizes well with Kale's playstyle and allows her to spike much faster because of the low price point of Monomune. The early tier purchase also provides her more mana for her to use while trying to farm up. Next up in the top lane is Kennen. Players are beginning to run Unsealed Spellbook much more often on him. One of the biggest benefits of using Spellbook is that it allows Kennen players to take three accessory runes from the Inspiration Tree instead of two. Kennen uses a ton of these extremely well, so let's talk about those builds first. For runes, run Unsealed Spellbook, Magical Footwear, Minion Dematerializer, Cosmic Insight, then take Nimbus Cloak and Transcendence. Most of these runes are extremely straightforward and it makes a lot of sense why you'd want them on Kennen. Magical Footwear is free movement speed and more mobility, Minion Dematerializer provides extra wave clear, and Cosmic Insight lowers Kennen's ability cooldowns as well as his flash cooldown. Nimbus Cloak ensures that whenever Kennen uses a summoner spell, he'll gain a burst of movement speed to make his ultimates more effective. By switching out summoner spells, Kennen is able to cast random filler spells like Heal, Ghost, Cleanse, or whatever other summoner spell he decides to take in order to stick onto his targets. When it comes to items, they're quite standard. You'll want to build a Hextech Proto Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, Morello Nomicon, Zonia's Hourglass, Void Staff, and a Ravidon's Death Cap. That's going to wrap up the top lane, so we're going to throw those builds up on your guys' screen one more time. Take one last look, because now we're going to talk about the jungle. Our first jungle build is for Rek'Sai. Players have begun building Edge of Night on her much more often. Edge of Night is dangerously oppressive on Rek'Sai. As soon as she tunnels towards you, it's like a typical shark attack scene from a scary movie. You want to either run away or try to get her away from you. Edge of Night makes it extremely difficult to stop Rek'Sai without burning your summoner spell Flash. A lot of the time, champions will use some form of crowd control or displacement to stuff Rek'Sai's flank or engage, but Edge of Night allows Rek'Sai to eat some crowd control for free, thus allowing her to freely assault her opponents. For her items, you'll build a Warrior Enchant on a Stalker's Blade, Ninja Tabi, Black Cleaver, Edge of Night, Umbral Glaive, and Guardian Angel. For her runes, you want to run Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Nimbus Cloak, and Water Walking. We've mentioned how powerful Nimbus Cloak is on junglers, but once again, please make sure you're running this rune. It's already hard enough to get away from Rek'Sai once she smites you, but Nimbus Cloak seals the deal. It makes Rek'Sai's early game ganks even more devastating. Here's a new, old one. Xin Zhao players are starting to run Phase Rush again. While this was meta about a year ago, players opted out of using it in favor of other aggressive options like Conqueror or Hail of Blades. 
However, since Phase Rush was buffed back in patch 10.7 for melee champions, it's now a much more appealing choice for Xin Zhao players. Xin Zhao's point-and-click slowing gap closer is already hard enough to deal with. Phase Rush, with the immense amount of movement speed it provides, means that even opponents that flash away won't be able to survive Xin Zhao's ganks. The burst of movement speed practically guarantees Xin Zhao will be able to stay in range to land the third hit of his Q to knock up his target into the air, easily securing those takedowns. For the runes, run Phase Rush, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Water Walking, Triumph, and Alacrity. For item builds, build a Warrior Enchant on either Stalker's Blade or Skirmisher's Saber, Black Cleaver, Ninja Tabi, Steric's Gage, Guardian Angel, and a Spirit Visage. Spirit Visage is extremely powerful on Xin Zhao because he received a buff a while back, targeted at increasing his sustain during late game teamfights. He has a very high amount of base healing, and building a Spirit Visage increases this even further. Real quick, we just want to mention that in our last episode, we actually talked about a certain Trundle build. Players began using Phase Rush on him since Trundle already deals stupid amounts of damage, and as of now, this is actually the meta build for him. Most players have switched over to this Keystone because it's so good on him. Trundle with some extra mobility is much scarier, as in most cases, you're trying to kite or run away from him anyway. Alright, that's going to wrap up the jungle. One more time, check out the screen for a recap of those jungle builds. Next, let's head into the mid lane. Alright, we all know that Galio's made his return to mid lane. He's been an amazing go-to pick since his buffs because of his high damage output, as well as his team utility. There definitely were times where Galio was the most feared mid laner in the game. Anytime you were low and he started charging his taunt, you already knew that the inevitable flash taunt into death combo was going to turn your screen gray once again. Well, we also know that you can't really do that anymore. Galio's taunt is much harder to land than before. You need to start channeling while near your targets, or you need to be faster than your opponents. Luckily, there are plenty of runes that can provide you that well-needed burst of speed. Right now, a rather crazy build we're seeing is Predator Galio. But not only that, he's played with a summoner heal in the mid lane as well. Before we talk a little bit more about it, let's run through those runes. For runes, you want to take Predator, Taste of Blood, Ghost Poro, Ingenious Hunter, Nimbus Cloak, and Absolute Focus. For items, build a Hextech Proto Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, Morella Nomicon, Zonia's Hourglass, Void Staff, and a Rabidon's Death Cap. Predator is quite easy to picture for Galio. You gain a ton of movement speed and also some bonus burst damage. This keystone makes it easier for Galio to find engages as well as ganks since he can't rely on his flash anymore. The reason Summoner Heal is good on Galio is because it synergizes well with Nimbus Cloak. Summoner Heal already provides a burst in movement speed, but when you throw in the Nimbus Cloak bonus, it becomes so much easier to stay in taunt range of your opponents. On top of this, Summoner Heal is already such a powerful asset in the mid lane. A single mid jungle 2v2 can decide the course of many games because these two roles have so much influence over the rest of the map. In the same way that bot laners run heal for their supports, mid laners can run heal for their junglers to help them out. This next build is for Azir, with a bunch of extra slows. Azir players are now building Twin Shadows as well as Hextech GLP for some extra crowd control. By slowing down his opponents, Azir is able to keep them in range of his soldiers for a little bit longer, thus increasing his damage output significantly. And let's not forget, of course, that crowd control obviously makes games so much easier to win. Without sacrificing much damage output, Azir is able to provide some extra utility for his teammates with this build. For runes, you want to take Electrocute with Taste of Blood, Eyeball Collection, Ingenious Hunter, Monoflow Band, and Transcendence. Absolutely make sure to run Ingenious Hunter as you'll be using your Twin Shadows in Hextech GLP quite regularly. For item builds, build a Hextech GLP, Sorcerer's Shoes, Twin Shadows, Zonia's Hourglass, Leandri's Torment, and a Void Staff. As Azir is a mid lane hyper carry, let's not forget how important it is to stay safe and protect yourself while playing him. These items can also be used defensively so that Azir can peel for himself. If his opponents reach too far, he can tag them with slows, create some space, and throw down his soldiers to punish his opponents. All right, that's gonna do it for the mid lane, so make sure to take another look at those mid lane builds. We're putting them up on the screen once again so you guys can save them or write them down, but next, let's talk about the bottom lane. Death Dance has been an incredibly popular item since its rework. It provides a nice set of stats, including both defensive and offensive ones. While it's an item geared towards melee champions, it's definitely still a viable option to build on a ranged champion as well. Ezreal is one such champion who's ventured to where no one has thought to. Death Dance stats are understandably quite powerful on Ezreal. He's already a safe marksman, but this item makes him even safer. He gains some extra armor, magic resistance, lifesteal, and even cooldown reduction from it. This time we'll actually mention the items first, so that you know what we're talking about. The items are Monomune, Ninja Tabi, Iceborne Gauntlet, Death Stance, Blade of the Rune King, and Mortal Reminder. Iceborne Gauntlet already makes Ezreal pretty tanky, but throwing in the armor from Death Stance makes it even harder to kill him. Now for the runes, you're also running Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, 
Cut Down, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. Conqueror provides a little bit of extra sustain and an incredible amount of adaptive force. Since Ezreal, like most marksmen, thrives during longer extended fights, he can deal a bunch of bonus damage while utilizing Conqueror. Once again, Presence of Mind and Biscuits increases Ezreal's mana pool, which increases the bonus AD conversion from Manamune. Our second bot lane build is, well, another Ezreal build. Instead of Death's Dance though, some players are finding that 10% cooldown reduction in a much more aggressive item in Ghostblade. This build is a lot more volatile, but extremely rewarding when played well. For items, you'll build a Monomune, Trinity Force, Yomu's Ghostblade, Ionian Boots of Lucidity, Blade of the Ruined King, and Mortal Reminder. The runes are identical, with Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Cut Down, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. Rather than focusing on survivability and sustain, this build focuses on making sure Ezreal's damage output is at its highest. Ghostblade's active also allows Ezreal to escape some sticky situations, or instead, chase his opponents down. The stats it provides aren't bad either. You're building flat damage, lethality, and cooldown reduction on top of everything. All of these are great on Ezreal, and this build is an excellent one when snowballing. That concludes our bot lane, or rather our Ezreal builds for this patch, so make sure to take one last look at the screen where we put them up for you. Finally, let's wrap it all up with supports. Tank Pike is starting to gain popularity. Building Pike as a tank can be quite difficult. Any healthy builds is converted into bonus AD, so you have to search for alternative ways to make him tanky. Luckily, the way has been found. First up, for runes, you want Aftershock, Demolish, Bone Plating, Unflinching, Zombie Ward, and Ultimate Hunter. Although Aftershock is weaker than it was last season for Pike, if you're trying to play him as a tankier support, you're gonna have to bite the bullet and just take it. Sure, it's weaker than before, but it's still a solid keystone on him. For items, you'll build a Frozen Heart, Boots of Swiftness, Umbral Glaive, Spirit Visage, Pauldrons of White Rock, and Guardian Angel. Since Pike's HP can't increase from items, the only way for him to get tankier is through armor and magic resist. Frozen Heart is a unique item with a unique passive. It slows the attack speed of nearby enemies, and this is another way to indirectly make Pike tankier. If opponents near him attack more slowly, he obviously takes less damage. This is one of the only ways to make Pike feel tankier. Spirit Visage is similar. It increases Pike's healing, so he'll be able to recover a little bit more health while not spotted by enemies. Joining the Twin Shadows train is Yumi. What's more annoying than those spooky ghosts running you down Summoner's Rift is when you can't even hunt down the cat that sent them after you. Yumi is already a pretty decent champion when it comes to chasing or helping allies escape. Twin Shadows makes both of these jobs so much easier. Since Yumi's Q can only hit a single target as well, Twin Shadows allows Yumi to slow multiple targets simultaneously. It also acts as a secondary slow while Yumi's Q is on cooldown. It's always nice to have a backup. Yumi's popularity has been climbing as more and more players have begun to understand just how OP she is. So let's go over that rune build. You want to run Summon Airy, Mana Flow Ban, Absolute Focus, Gathering Storm, and then Presence of Mind and Cut Down. As well for items, you want to build a Shard of True Ice, Athene's Unholy Grail, Twin Shadows, Ardent Sensor, Mikhail's Crucible, and you can sneak in a Magi's Soul Stealer. And if you can't do that, then you can just throw in Redemption. And finally, Fiddlestick's support is starting to pick back up. Players have been experimenting more and more to bring him back. He even got buffs recently targeted at him as a support exclusively. See, even Riot kind of wants him back at the support role. Some players have answered the call and have been continuing to optimize his items and runes. So here's what we've got so far. For runes, you want to run Arcane Comet, Nimbus Cloak, Celerity, Scorch, Perfect Timing, and Cosmic Insight. The combination of Arcane Comet and Scorch proves to be quite annoying to play against. Whenever Fiddlesticks pokes with his E, he'll be able to stick on some extra damage. Slowly but surely, he's able to push enemies out of lane by poking them over and over again. For runes, you want to build a Bulwark of the Mountain, Zonia's Hourglass, Boots of Swiftness, Morellanomicon, Void Staff, and Locket of the Iron Solari. While this build leaves Fiddlesticks much more vulnerable than before, his poke can feel so much more annoying because of all the runes he runs. All right, for the last time guys, here are those builds up on the screen once again. And that's gonna conclude our Korean builds on 10.10 .10 video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to check out ProGuides.com as well as our YouTube channel for even more informational content just like this. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and like this video so that you can stay updated with all our new content that gets released. Until next time, good luck on the Rift Summoners.